What's up everybody, Ryan here. Got a ream, RTU. We had a, uh, another service guy out here, found a blown 100 amp fuse in the disconnect down in the store. So we currently have no power here. Blown fuse, hooked it over. Rode up to do some further troubleshooting. That's what I'm here for today. We're also gonna install a phase monitor in this unit. And see if we can get to the bottom of what blew our 100 amp fuse. I'm gonna go ahead and get some panels uncovered. Do a little uh, electrical search and then we will install a phase monitor probably right here uh, and see if we can get to the bottom of what blew the fuse 100 amp fuses don't normally just blow on their own that coil is awfully dirty so we will give this thing a thorough look and i will bring you along with me so let's get into it all right guys got the blower panel open um, our first time at this store was on the service call. Right off the bat, I noticed somebody replaced the blower motor and I don't know, decided to wire it up like this. I feel the hole in the bottom, so that may or may not be the problem. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of noting things I'm finding. I've got wires going through over there for the condenser fans and compressors. Still on the search to see what we've got going on here. Um, electric strip heat, that might be our issue. We've got power right here going to our electric strip heaters. All right, guys, I did find one blown 60 amp fuse here on the strip heater section. Let's see, you can take my word for it. It is, it is bad. Here's a good one. This one's blown. Pulled the covers off of the contactors here got some burnt pitted contactors i'm not sure if they were running heat you know at all lately i doubt it but could have just been an issue from before so we're going to investigate these strip heaters the blower i have an issue with the wiring on that just the way it's run um so that's what i've come up with so far i forgot a pen and paper to start writing things down so I'll be taking a trip back down to the van to replace those fuses. And when the time comes, I'll grab some paper and a pen then. We'll get everything written up as I find it. Well, I've got some wires here that are getting scuffed. Is that through? I can't tell. Right there. And then again here, the zip ties not secured very good they're not rubbed through completely but damn close right there um, so we're gonna have to address these wires get that other panel off and get you a better look at this dirty coil so they're gonna be getting a right up for a coil cleaning as well all right guys i found it right here one of the condenser fan motor wires if i can even get in there right there see if i can zoom in on that right there it is rubbed right through and arced in fact looks like it blew a hole right in this i don't think that's right there's where i found it this one is about rubbed through. So, get my damn camera out of there. Right there, right there it is. You can get a kind of a better look at it. Let me get my. That's bare wire rubbed out right there. So, more than likely that's going to be the issue, but I'm going to continue to go through everything and look at all the wiring check all the contactors um, I'm gonna investigate these uh, this blown fuse and these strip heaters 
And then of course, we're gonna install that phase monitor. I've been wanting to do a video on that. We've been putting a lot of those in. Let me show it to you here. It's the ICM controls, uh, ICM 450A. They're pretty, they're pretty cool. Uh, they work well. I uh, just have to wire them up properly and power your control circuit so when something goofy goes on with the power it actually opens the contact and shuts your unit down we will just break r to the thermostat and hopefully that shuts everything down i know on the york units you have to actually kill power to the control board because if the uh, phase monitor trips it won't shut off the fans and everything right away it runs it for a bit so i'm gonna go ahead and start buttoning up some wires and making some wiring repairs i'm not going to film the whole thing but i'll bring it back and kind of show you what i did uh, when i'm finished up all right guys i've got a wiring repair there i put a butt connector taped it up real good secured it nice and tight all the way down to the motor so nothing should be rubbing while i was in here i noticed this condenser coil looks like something smashed into it it's all bent in uh, so we're definitely going to be making sure there's refrigerant in this sucker i also still have to re-secure these lines before this one rubs out as well i'm going to throw some tape on that it does not look like it went all the way through but i'm gonna tape it up get all these secured get this uh section buttoned up again here i'm gonna open up Look at that, somebody took off the crankcase heater and just tucked the wires in. All that's gonna get secured. I wonder what year this thing is. It's gotta be fairly old. Ream. Okay, manufactured date, 11 of 2003. So she's no spring chicken, so we're definitely gonna be checking the refrigerant and uh, looking into that coil. Looks like it hit on this metal bracketing uh, it just seems odd that it's so bent in like that anyway i'm gonna carry on i'll bring you back we'll get that phase monitor wired up i know what happened here um, this motor came with a box attached exterior and apparently it must not have fit because i got to looking you can see where the motor wasn't painted and the box sat there so whoever put this motor in had to take that box off to get this motor to work so that's why it's wired up like this yeah that's about the best i'm gonna get it for now i just kind of zip tied it up so nothing was touching here i'm gonna get a two by four box um with some half inch seal tight i think just to get it up in the motor a little bit so it's not rubbing on a raw edge and get everything contained inside a two by four box just mount it here way we don't have any wires flopping around i already rerouted these condenser fan motor wires just they had it going over here and then over there uh, now it's nice and secure i taped up where it was starting to rub out there it hadn't rubbed out all the way through um, so i think we're good on this end i still have the compressors to pin up all these wires and uh, just confirm nothing's burn up inside of there all right guys i've got all the wiring done um i tested the heat strips they're good we just have a blown fuse here uh possibly from the contactors this one looks pretty smoked uh we will return with the fuses cycle everything make sure it's good to go but i don't think we're gonna have much of a problem there filters are clean baby. all right so now i've got the phase monitor mounted right here i like it it fits there nicely uh we gotta we gotta tie in our line voltage l1 l2 l3 right here we're just monitoring the supply voltage to the unit if we wanted to monitor the load we would need a phase monitor per component per compressor per blower uh so we're just monitoring our power in um so we're gonna tie l1 l2 and l3 right here i was able to get my wires pushed into the lugs here everything is tight and secure l1 l2 l3 got them landed so what i'm going to do is run 24 volts from my transformer down here and then we're going to break r uh, so i'm going to take r put it on common uh, normally open we'll go uh, back to R and that will kill power to the thermostat 
if there's any issue with the incoming voltage. All right, guys, I've got 24 volts tied in here. Our red wire from the transformer is our 24 volt power. Just wire nutted it right in there. Common landed here on the terminal block, zip tied down nicely, and landed here on our control voltage. 18 to 240 volts. I like using 24 volts because you can get it right there. So next thing we're gonna do is take R and land it on common and then take a wire from normally open to um, back to R to feed our thermostat. I know what you're thinking. You're saying normally open. Don't you want it on normally closed? No, because if you look here, these are the contact positions when there's no power at all. So I'm on normally open, it is open. Go to normally closed, it's closed. So when this control gets power and it realizes everything's all right, it's gonna switch right there. So normally open will be closed when there's power. Uh, when I first started putting these in, I wired up the first one to normally closed and it wasn't right, so seems a little backwards to me but those are the positions of the switch when there's no power applied therefore normally open but that's where you're gonna land your wire so I'm gonna go ahead and pull R put a connector on it and then just take another wire and jump it right on over there all right I'm all wired up uh, R 24 volts down to common through the normally open which will be closed once it's powered up feeding 24 volts down to our thermostat all right I looked this unit all over. I got some write-ups. I have to button everything up. Uh, I didn't show you this yet, but I did remove that. It looks like at some point in time this coil took a beating. It's all bowed in there. I'm supposed to be flat, but maybe a big fat guy leaned on it. Who knows? All right, guys, all buttoned up. Both circuits have refrigerant in them. So let's hope nothing goes boom, all right? All right, that's a good sign. Our control has powered up. So I'm gonna go ahead and check voltage here real quick. I'm gonna put the, looks like 493. It says phase average 490. I'm gonna check it with my meter. I'll be right back. All right, I'm getting 487. So let's see here, what's this fault? Line over volt. All right, so no more entries. Let's go ahead and set this baby up. Line voltage, it's set for 208. We're going to take it up to 487. I don't know if you can see that. We're going to take it up to 487. Whoop. All right, back it down. 487. All right. So next, delay on break, 15 seconds. Delay on fault, 15. Over voltage, 20%. Under voltage, 20%. Phase unbalanced, 20%. Reset mode, zero. Control mode is in the off position. You're going to want to put that on. Lang language is English. All right. Read. All right. So there we go. Let's clear our fault. Clearing log. All right. So let's go ahead and test and make sure that we've got 24 volts coming out. And we do. All right, guys, I got the unit running from the thermostat. Circuit two appears to be working pretty good. 77 pounds of suction pressure, 241 pounds ahead. Circuit one, though, I got 350 pounds of head pressure and only 46 pounds of suction. So I think we have a restriction in it. Um, I'm gonna dig into that here a little bit, but now that I got it running from the thermostat, uh, let's take a look here. I'm gonna test this uh, phase monitor again. Boom, and there it goes. It shuts everything off. 
almost immediately, and that's what you want. You want it to kill the power. I know on the York units that have those uh, Johnson control boards in them, you have to kill the power to the board and shut that board off or it won't shut the blower and the compressors down immediately. And if you have a problem with uh, your power, you're not wanting that motor and those compressors and those things to run. So let me find the filter dryer on this sucker and see if maybe it's restricted there. I don't see anything out here. So I'm gonna find it, I'm gonna cycle it again. I'm gonna take some temperature readings and see uh, what we got going on. I'm almost positive we have a restriction just from the high head pressure and the very low suction pressure, but I'm gonna look into that here a little bit more. Uh, but we got done what we needed to get done on the quoted work. Um, the rubbed out wire that blew the fuse, the phase monitor getting installed, I'm writing up contactors, some heating components and things of that nature, but I'm gonna poke around on this uh, air conditioning end and I'll be back here with you shortly. Right here is my filter dryer. I think it's restricted right here. So we're gonna start with that. I'll write it up. I'm gonna disable first stage and uh, we'll back blow it, um, take everything apart. But yeah, it's definitely restricted. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. That'll notify you anytime I got a new video coming out. Leave me a comment, hit like, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.